Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. My name is Sabinda. Welcome. I want to share with you uh, today a topic that I call uh, course and career advice I will give to my younger self if I were to go to the to the university again. The course or the career advice that I will uh, consider giving to myself <laughs> if I were to, um, uh, you know, have the opportunity to be maybe 20 years again or 15 or 17 years again, what I would give to myself. Uh, the other day I was talking to this young woman who uh, just completed the SSS, the SHS, as, as they say it now. And uh, she's contemplating of going to the, to the university. Uh, this is a woman, or this is a young girl, who is coming from family that uh, there is no father, and the mother has not been so much involved in her uh, education. She had to struggle herself to, you know, you know, uh, depend on family members, depend on people that she uh, did not know to get herself through uh, secondary education in some of the districts in our country, Ghana. And uh, when she completed, uh, she didn't pass. And so one of the cousins or one of the aunties uh, told her to go and write the exam again so that she will, you know, find, you know, what we call a better uh, grade and maybe uh, get to go to the university. Now, fortunately, after trying for about three times, uh, she told me that she's qualified and that she wants to go to the university. So I was asking her, so if you want to go to the university, what are you going to study? She said, uh, I want to go and do nursing. And okay, what do you want? What do you want to go and do nursing? So when you know when you complete nursing, there will be job for you to do. So she will think that she doesn't have to struggle to get to nursing. Then she said that no, I was also thinking of going to do law. Then she also said that you know I I, I was even thinking of economics. Now, this is not a typical, this is not something that is special with her. I think most of us from this kind of family background where uh, there was not somebody before you, you know, a father, a mother who had gone through some of these schools. These are the things that we had to deal with. I mean, that's a fact. You will never even think what kind of course, what kind of uh, program, what the future even holds. So I was intrigued, you know, I was interested and uh, I'm passionate about things like that where somebody is, is ambitious, wants to do something with herself, but then she has very little information to make at least project, at least, you know, try to maybe make some kind of decision that will help her in the future. So I started to ask her questions. So why, why do you want to do the nursing? And then she answered, then I asked her, so you as a person, what do you think you can easily do and do well? And she said, no, you know, I am very good with my hands. I, am, I, I like doing things with my hands. I can make a lot of things easily, you know, when I am engaged to it. So, okay, so what do you want to become a nurse? If you can do a lot with your hands, if you can create a lot of things with your hands, what do you want to become a nurse? Uh, she, she started to think of it. Then I asked her, do you factor the future in it? You factor maybe. Do you think that once, oh no, he said, oh, you know, when I become a nurse or a lawyer or economist, I will have money. So, uh, are you sure? So are you saying that if you go to Legon? see all the richest people there or if you go to Kwame Nkrumah University you see all the richest people there is it is it the money and do you think that if you become a nurse or a lawyer or economist you have a lot of money 
or you think that you're just you know now these are things that we all have to deal with i have to deal with the same thing i, I engage my father he, he chose the course that he chose for me because that's what he knew and uh, most of the advice that they give us is uh, get a course that will get you a job or your your grades are good so you have this kind of job and usually it's about what you know it and i know it the, the fantastic the the prominent jobs in society we all know it i'm not going to mention them and so we're still running a tape that is about maybe 100 years old or 50 years old something like that where we and i thought that a lot had changed in terms of the kind of future that most of these children are going to live in just about the last time you know they started the, the, the universities open the polytechnics and all those the tertiary they open again and most of them parents are looking at the quality courses that their children will get so that they will have a fair chance in society i told them that there are there are welfare professions welfare professions are professions that when you get they will provide a house for you they will provide a car for you they they may even pay your children's school fees they will give you uh, a lot of you know and anytime you go for meeting you have a lot of money like that uh if it's a welfare profession and we have a lot of them because of our colonial background we have a lot of people that we say that they're very successful but largely they live on welfare what i mean by welfare is that the government is taking care of them the government or, or an institution is taking care of them if they were to work and be paid fairly a lot of them could not maintain that kind of standard of living and you know them i know them some of them don't even you know they have free house help they have all kind of things they even pay them for their drivers some people who will read their house electricity is free there are professions like that the only thing is that they are not in the majority you know they are not in the majority so uh most of us who will not be at least fortunate to live or to have this kind of professions right? you know a lot of them are politicians big civil servants <laughs> religious organizations they are not in the majority majority of us would have to go and fight for our own and so the kind of advice that i think i would give not that i think i i, I ask the girl and i question her and then i made some input i said that if you are going to choose a course uh, if I were you, if I were that stage, backtrack, backdate seven years ago, um, backdate, uh, this is 1997, so let's say maybe 19 years ago or something like that. Backtrack, if I were that young man with what I know today, the kind of thing that I would do or the kind of course and even career that I would give, the advice that I would give myself is that uh, you should know yourself. You should have a fair idea about the things that you do that you do well so are you the kind of person who is able to work with your hands you know like what the girl said or you are able to work a lot with your brain your mind and some people are able to you know they have good talent with their legs some people are very good with with mathematics calculations some people are very good with speaking some people are very good whatever talent that you have don't don't take it out don't 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 take it out when you're thinking of the tertiary education don't take it out life is easy or life is a bit uh, less stressful if you're able to get the right kind of education with, a, with the right kind of skill or, or talent that you're born with it's easy so it's not just you becoming an nurse. do you have the heart for it do you think that you are worried for it? Do you think if you took the money out, would it be a profession that you consider? If you took the money out, would you would the engineering be the profession you consider? Or would the, the, the banking be an industry that you consider? If you took the money out. If you took the money out, would you become a lecturer, a teacher, or a police officer, a military officer? If you took the money out, would you become uh, uh, a politician? Or would you become a pastor what is it if you if money was never part of the of the equation would you would you consider that kind of profession because eventually money actually is separate <laughs> except the welfare people <laughs> it's separate and uh, for most most of us i think that you should have that sense of purpose 
even at that time if i were to be a young boy that i were to give that kind of advice to myself i would say that where what what am i endowed with how do i look at life what is it that i can make a name what is it that i think i have that sense of purpose what gets my attention i will consider that it's not just the course because the course will get you a job but it will not make you rich but the passion where you can build on your talent, on your gift, is critical to living a fulfilling life. And so I would, I would tell myself that what is it that I'm endowed with? I, I, I would need that because that way, at least I'll, fair, I'll have a fair chance of being myself. The next one I will tell, the, the, I will tell myself that uh, you should have the freedom, the freedom. Choose an environment where you have the freedom to work with your talent or your gift. Choose a profession. Choose a career where you have that liberty to express that. It's very important that you look at that. You don't just say that, oh, I want to become a teacher. Because my grandfather was a teacher and my sister was a teacher. My mother was a teacher. Do you like teaching? And if you like teaching, you will know. Growing up, you see that uh, you will easily want to teach somebody. Even if they didn't want to give you money. It will be something that you will easily do. When you see somebody in that need of that, that, that talent, that gift that you have, you will easily just jump in. You will help them. You will never even get tired. Before you even think of, somebody may even eventually advise you that, oh, you know, you can charge.